So last week, I released a video on tips for the CPTS certification, where I mentioned that this certification helped me get my first job in cybersecurity, but I didn't really get into details on how that happened. So I thought that I do a review of my CPTS experience, not really a review of the certification itself because the exam structure changed since I took the exam last year, but rather a review of my experience with the certification, why I chose it, how I prepare for it, and how it helped me get my first job in cybersecurity. So let's start by building a timeline of events. In June 2023, I graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in software engineering. By then, I had some cybersecurity experience because of college, of course, and also because I had played around a little bit with TriHackMe. I did some CTF boxes, and I believe I did all the offensive cybersecurity learning paths the platform had to offer. I had also some professional experience as a software engineer since I had uh, a work contract that started during my senior year and lasted until March 2024. So overall, one year experience as a software engineer and some non-professional experience in cybersecurity due to try hack me. So in that sense, I wasn't a complete rookie in technology, but I wasn't really experienced either. So that's when I realized I was in a great position to pivot from software engineering to offensive cybersecurity, which was something I had already decided that I wanted to do. So my plan was to study and get certified in some penetration tester certification so that I could break into the field and get my first job in offensive cybersecurity. And I chose the CPTS and not something like the OSCP, which is still the gold standard for penetration tester certifications, because the OSCP is much, much more expensive than the CPTS. And I heard reviews online saying that the CPTS is actually way more valuable in terms of what you learn than the OSCP is. So I decided I wanted to uh, take the CPTS first, and then later, maybe when I get a job, I could get my employer to sponsor for more certifications. And this plan ended up working out nicely because right now I'm employed and my employer is currently sponsoring my OSCP. So it all ended up working fine in the end. But I don't want to give the impression that I chose the CPTS just because it's less expensive than the OSCP. I did my research and compared the course material and the syllabus between the two courses. And I had come to the conclusion that the CPTS was not only the less expensive option, but the better option in terms of what you learn. And although right now I am not OSCP certified, I'm still working through the course. From what I saw so far, I can say that I still believe that the CPTS is the superior course. Now, let's talk about how I studied the certification and how I prepare for the exam. I started studying for the CPTS on January 2nd, 2024. It took me 157 days, about four and a half months to finish the course and request the exam attempt. But as you can see, I took a break in March to focus on my software engineering contract, which was coming to an end. So in total, I actively studied for about 105 of those days, closer to three and a half months in total. That also includes time I spent on extra modules, which are not part of the course material, such as using CrapMap exec. So all in all, let's call it four months of study. That was the number of days studied. Now let's talk about the number of hours studied each day. So the median number was quite low at 2.18 hours studied each day, but the average was a little higher at 2.47. Again, this may seem low, but keep in mind that for the first half of this time frame, I was balancing work and studying, and that throughout this whole time, I was using a Pomodoro app to track my, my study time, and I only log the time I am in really deep focus. So if I need to get up or um, zone out, or if there's a password attack running, I always pause the Pomodoro app and only resume once I'm focusing again. So this uh, estimate of our study is really lean. There's really no fluff in it. So yeah, the number of hours studied each day range from two all the way to six. And over the entire study period, I clocked 259 hours in total. Actabox provides an estimate for how long it will take to complete the course, and their estimate is 43 days. So if we take that at face value, their estimate is completely inaccurate, since in my experience, it took me more than three times that amount. 
but we must remember that a day to hack the box is equal to eight study hours. So we're looking at a total estimate of 344 hours of study. And since it took me only 259, in that sense, their estimate is actually larger than the amount of hours I actually ended up putting on the course. So it all depends on how you look at it. If you look at the day estimate, I believe it's way, way lower than it should be. But if you look at the hour estimate, I believe that it's actually a little higher than maybe most people will have to put in. Actibox also provides an estimate for how long it will take to finish each module. And in general, their estimates were pretty accurate. In my case, most modules took less time than expected, but there were also some exceptions like the password attacks module, which took significantly longer than the estimate. Overall though, their estimates were all reasonably accurate, so you can go by that if you want to. Now about the cost of the certification. We first have the cost of the exam attempt. So one voucher will cost you 220 euros. At least that's what it costed me back in the day. And it will give you two attempts at the exam. Then there's also the cost of the Hack the Box Academy platform. I used the student's discount, which uh, costed me eight euros per month. So since it took me slightly more than four months to finish the course, the grand total was 40 euros, but I could have saved a little money if I had, you know, condensed all my study days into a continuous section instead of having that big break in the middle. But overall, 260 euros for the certification wasn't really that expensive at all, especially when you consider how much the OSCP and other certification costs. So it's a good deal, in my opinion. Now about the exam itself, I don't have much to say except that it was very hard and that I had to dedicate pretty much 100% of my attention to it in order to have success. I passed it on my first try with uh, 13 out of 14 flags. It took me eight days to capture the necessary flags to pass and I submitted my report on the ninth day. So although I submitted my exam attempt with one day to spare, make no mistake, this was a very difficult exam. It was a grueling experience in a good sense. And I'm sure if I hadn't given my full attention to it, I would have no chance of passing the exam on my first attempt. So this would be my advice to you, as I mentioned in my tips video, give it your full attention. It really deserves it. After submitting my attempt, I got my results back 20 business days after the fact, which is the longer Hack the Box can legally make you wait. So when they say that the exam results can take up to 20 business days, I would encourage you to really expect it to take the entire 20 business days because in my experience and according to experience from other people I know, they really take their time grading your exam. So don't expect it to come any sooner than 20 business days. So immediately after receiving my certification results back, I started applying for jobs on LinkedIn. And after 45 days, I finally got a job offering I was happy with. Some important details to consider. I only use LinkedIn to find openings. I didn't code send my CV to any particular company. I lost track of how many positions I applied to. It must have been a lot. The market was in a really bad spot at the time, and maybe it still is. And the technical people I spoke with during those interviews did in fact recognize the CPTS by name. So I believe it's becoming a more well-recognized certification by the day. That being said, I believe that the real value for the CPTS wasn't the name recognition or bypassing HR or anything like that, but rather the skills and knowledge it taught me that allowed me to do well on the technical interviews and later on the job. And yeah, there's not much else to say. I just applied to a lot of jobs, which led to many, many no's, which led to a few yeses. And those yeses led to technical interviews, which I did well at thanks to the CPTS certification. And eventually I got a job offer as a application security engineer. And now I work in cybersecurity. And yeah, that's the story and how I went from software engineer to unemployed to application security engineer in the span of six months, thanks to the CPTS certification. 
please let me know if you have any questions or any topics for future videos and yeah that's it for now bye